Thank you very much for inviting me to this excellent conference. I'm enjoying myself, I can tell you that much. This uh, uh, jo uh, uh, work is joined with Jonathan Heathcote and Gianluca Violante. So, we like to know, um, broadly speaking, the answer to a very simple question. How progressive should taxes be? So, why should, why do we want progressivity? Well, it, it, if you have progressive taxes, that's a way um, uh, to provide some kind of insurance, for the government to provide some insurance where the private market fails. Um, uh, and, and it could also be that you would like to redistribute from those who have been lucky by being born with high ability to those who are uh, born with low ability. There are some, we also know, there are some arguments you typically hear in the debate against progressive tax. So for example, uh, the most common one is that, well, it, it, it distorts labor supply. There's also, um, uh, uh, people also argue that it distorts human capital investment. Um, uh, or that perhaps you, you get the redistribution that you don't want. So clearly, progressive taxes means that you redistribute from the, from the income rich to the income poor. Now it could be that the income poor are poor because they're lazy and don't necessarily want that redistribution. So I like to, I like to put on the table a theory, a model where we can talk about taxation. And I want this model to have a couple of things. I want it to have, in order to, to, in order to be able to talk about the things I had on the previous slide, I want it to be a, a meaningful choice of skill. And I want also, I want the, I want the skill prices to be endogenous somehow. I would like people to differ uh, in their ability to learn. Um, and I want their obviously to be endogenous labor supply. Um, so the, the, all those things should somehow uh, uh, account for the negatives of progressive taxation. Now obviously, I want it to be, I want to give it a chance to progressive taxes. So, so we would like there to be some risk. I'd like there to be some, it isn't like wage risk. Uh, that people can that people can uh, insure against to some extent. Um, so, at the, uh, we're going to st start with a hugget model, basically, uh, and I'm going to add some. They're going to be, but they're going to have a bit more insurance than in his model. Um, <coughs> we we'll also to be able to talk about uh, uh, lazy and diligent. We we'll like there to be some kind of heterogeneity in the preference for issue. Now, I like to have all those things. But I like the model also to deliver some, some, some to be, to, to have some uh, aspects, uh, to, to have some, to be able to capture some, some key empirical aspects. <coughs> I like, I like the, the, since we're talking about uh, uh, taxation of, of earnings, I would like the, tech, the distribution of earnings to be reasonable in some sense. So I like, I like for example, I would like that the upper tail of, um, of, of wages to be uh, uh, heavy, say it's greatly distributed. I also like that the bulk of the distribution is somehow low normal. <coughs> I would also like that, the, if, 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 that the somehow the, the, the cross-section dispersion uh, and, and, uh, uh, of, of consumption hours and wages and the core movements between these are somehow, the model that we're looking at, the, the, those core movements are right somehow in the background. Um, I, I was all also like that, that since we're talking about investment in skills, um, I would like that the, the, the return to education, for example, should be roughly linear in the investment. Why? Why? Well, because I think that's roughly what the data say. Why are Well, the honest answer is that I can deliver it, but I think, <laughs> but I think also, I, I think, I, I, I really insist that this is to get the right cost. 
uh, to start to write down a, oh, by the way, a tractable model of um, uh, where I have the right consumption hours and wages. That's not easy. Tractable. All right. What do you mean by tractable? Tractable. I mean analytical. Uh, that might that might be wrong. I want to be I want to be able to solve it by pen and pencil. That's what you mean by that. Yes. All right. So <coughs> it's gonna. So I'm gonna make some assumptions. Some of them you are not gonna like. But uh, but uh, I, I I think that in the end of the day you you agree with me that uh, the price is worth worth it. Perhaps not for Victor, but I, I I believe I can convince him as well. Now um. Uh, in studying taxation, the gold standard, of course, is to is to look at um, uh, is to do some kind of release exercise. We're not going to do that. Instead, <coughs> we're going to do something a bit simpler. We're going to uh, uh, do a version of a Ramsey approach, where where the government somehow takes uh, uh, the policy instrument or some, a class of policies, um, uh, uh, chooses policy within some class, and take the market structure as given, and choose a comparative equilibrium so that. That this comparative equilibrium is is uh, uh, is, uh, is one of uh, of this incomplete market economy. Uh, the policies is in some kind of non-linear tax and transfer system class. Uh, and by the way, the government will also choose some some public goods in the background. We will we will be able to because of the simplicity of the model. It's going to be relatively easy to think of. I'm going to I'm going to start working with a say an equally weighted planner. Um, it's going to be relatively easy to, to, to modify that, uh, to, to allow for um, uh, planners that think differently. That will be clear later. All right. Let me start with the model. Um, it's a perpetual youth model um, where people die. And they survive with probability delta. Why do they die? Well, you know, if you want to talk about uh, uh, educational investment or, or skill investment at the beginning of life, you you cannot uh, you have to let some people start <coughs> all the time. Uh, people have preferences over consumption, hours worked, uh, some kind of public good provision, and some skill investment effort. S. Yes. Um, they have they have um, an additively separate utility function over consumption hours and public good, so, uh, um, where, where one component uh, takes this in, takes this into account plus the utility of the initial investment. <coughs> I'm going to assume that um, this. I mean, I, I, I'm going to uh, assume that um, you get. Taking education does not take any time. It's done in an instant. <coughs> but um, uh, but you, choose, you choose your skill level S, and the cost of that is quadratic in S. Um, uh, but the, 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 this cost is somehow uh, uh, modified by 1 over kappa i. Or kappa i is an individual specific thing. That's what you think of as a learning ability. Um, there are many, uh, by the way, this kappa i is distributed exponentially. So th there are many assumptions <coughs> here that I can, I can relax. But that one, I cannot relax. I'm going to get back to why this is very, that, that this is exponential is very important. All right, let's talk about, um, let's talk about utility function. But that, that doesn't that not really this is not Um, so are you asking why it's so important, no. or how, how I can get the right one? We have enough flexibility mm. in the type of exponential plan that we're using to get a good sense of what is the true distribution of those kids in the population. Good question. So I'm, I'm going to punt on the, on the actual allocation of how many people take, for example, 12, 13, 14 years of education. I'm not going to look at those data. Uh, I'm going to think of this as capturing some kind of bit more 
uh, you know, some, so, so how many years of education you take is part of the S, but it's also the effort you make at uh, how hard you study at, at school. That determines your skill. Now, now, yeah. If, if, I ask the question again. I didn't understand. Uh, the policies that the government is considering. Yes. Capable of dissuading people from attending school. Um, y uh, y um, yes, but indirectly. The, the, the government is going to choose the tax system. Okay. But it will, it will be lovely to be able to touch these cutbacks. But they are essentially, in some sense, uh, just a measure of our ignorance. They are, the government cannot touch them. No, the, the number of people who will stop going to school if you make a much more progressive yes. policy will depend on the shape of those. Absolutely. Uh, what do we know about those shapes to make a, such calculations? You're going to, you're going to say this is a distribution of talent, mm -hmm. the government put progressive taxation, it's going to ensure some people that makes education less attractive. This is how many how much less educational investment will happen. That's all a function of what those cutbacks, how those cutbacks look like. Mm -hmm. Another way of asking is yeah. what could be the system aided? Uh, so easy to answer that, hard to answer this, that one. So, the the, so well, ADA, ADA is in principle, we can read in principle, we can, we can estimate ADA by looking at the, uh, at the uh, return to scale. Um, and, and the distribution of choices that come out of the model and how this distribution changes and how that distribution changes when you change taxes. Okay, uh, but let, let's, let's uh, so as a cheap answer to say I'm gonna get back to it, but I'm actually gonna get back to it. And we can, we can return, not give, be able to give an answer, but then we can at least discuss it once we see the allocations. All right, so uh, people have a utility function. Uh, once they take in their education, they have a utility function every period. That utility function takes into consider uh, as, as log of consumption minus some disutility of some labor effort. Um, that lab uh, disutility is CRA, um, and um, then there is this, this psi here, psi i is a measure of your laziness. Fun, sorry. Fine. F. I'm sorry. Let me call it F then. <laughs> yes. Every, every papa always calls it this by F. Um, so uh, this uh, F. Uh, if I, uh, um, if 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 I is large. It means that you have a large disutility labor effort. It means you will see later that then you don't choose to work very little. And then, in addition, there is this, uh, this uh, utility of the public good. So I want to say one thing. So uh, there's obviously it's a big uh, cost, as I'm sure. It's going to tell us in, in our show so that it's very important to allow for some kind of, um, uh, to not force these utility of these things to be separable. But we, it, we could. We'll uh, uh, solve a different model where you have cut down with utility or consumption leisure. Um, uh, we can derive most of the results we have here. It's just that it's going to be very difficult, at least we haven't figured out how to do it yet, to, to, to allow for, for, for this preference heterogeneity within that model and still be able to solve it uh, analytically. <coughs> All right. Um, uh, this phi is, is, um, um, is uh, normally distributed. Uh, with variance V5. Is that an important assumption? Like What's that? Kappa or, uh, or two, uh, two questions. Sir. I can answer this one first, and then I'll listen to you afterwards. So, the, so okay. So, uh, one more said, I would like to have a distribution where the tail is Pareto and the, the bulk is log normal. That's what it takes. So, why do we know that that's a good characterization of, of laziness in the population? Where, where do you get that sense of that? that they want to know? Did, did you mm. Um, so I so okay. Let me answer. Let me let me answer it this way. 
<coughs> first of all, I don't, we haven't, uh, uh, um, we could discipline this, we don't have to make, let this distribution be normal. It can be whatever, and we can still solve the model. The, then it's convenient that it's normal because that allows us to, to derive the, the wealth, <coughs> social wealth function will then be analytical at the end of the day. If, if this, this has some other distribution, we'll just have some, we'll just uh, have to integrate over something. So that's a cheap answer. The, uh, now, the, we could somehow, um, what so we have not done, but what we could do is to uh, look at data and somehow back it out, what that distribution is. That would, obviously, uh, the moment we want to, to ask quantitatively, what is, uh, what, is, what is the right uh, um, progressive? That's what we would have to do, which we have not done. Well, do you have the same question? Well, it's similar in the sense that it, it seems like it should matter whether uh, people are low income because they're lazy or because they have a high cost of investing in skill, not this is going to matter for the progressivity of the Absolutely. Tax. As you see, it will. But it seems here <coughs> that, assume that these two uh, parameters are, are not joint, are independently distributed. Oh. Um, uh, which we're going to assume on the next slide. Yes, we assume that. That we don't have to. We don't have to assume that. Uh, uh, it's just that we didn't have the energy to have those uh, cost terms floating around. But that, that's that's not that's not hard. I guess my point is that the correlation might influence the optimal degree of progressivity. Absolutely, it does. Uh, and uh, how you feel with respect to to redistributing uh, 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 to the lazy is also going to influence that progressivity. All right, uh, technology. Uh, so what we want to do is to take a, so we want to uh, have people, people have different skills, where these are different inputs in the production function. And we would like the, uh, that the, if the distribution of skills changes, that is going to influence prices. That's the aim. So the natural starting point, of course, is the Katz and Murphy production function. Uh, they assumed. Uh, two, two types of skills, high skill and low skill. Some people, for example, Kustas and Scorters, have a general set of analog for more skills. We go a step further and have uh, uh, many, in, in fact, infinitely many skills. So N of S is the number of uh, effective hours supply of skill S. And, and the total uh, output is um, a CS function over that, with theta. It's the elasticity substitution between those uh, uh, skill types, and, and theta is larger or equal to one. If if you had if you had uh, uh, theta equal to one, it would be Cobb Douglas. If you had theta, theta equal to infinity, it would be just uh, the standard. Uh, just you add up hours, so to speak, uh, effective hours worked. Um, now, the effective hours uh, for a skill type S, uh, we just add up uh, over in the whole population the number. Of uh, for each individual, the number of hours worked for individual I times the number of efficiency units. And we'll learn on the next slide what an efficiency unit is. We just add up that. Um, <coughs> finally, um, uh, we don't allow, so I should say, um, uh, Victor has a line which I like a lot, is that you can have one unreasonable assumption <laughs> per paper. <laughs> so I can use it once, and I will use it here actually. So I like I like that uh, the, there is uh, that aggregate uh, output is equal to aggregate consumption plus public good provision. So what is what is hidden here, of course, is that there is no the aggregate wealth is zero, like in Mark's Mark Huggett's model. So, uh, do you want to have temporary shocks, or do you want to only have permanent? I'm going to have temporary shocks. In fact, I'm going to talk about it now. So Z, these are uh, effective units uh, um, for each individual. So I should say, uh, these are uh, effective units. I, I want to decompose it into two terms. I'll find epsilon. So the first term, I wanted to follow a unit root um, uh, with uh, where the variance of the nations are normal, again, this is not necessary in order to solve the model, but it is useful in terms of driving uh, a, a, a closed form expression for the social welfare at the end of the day. The second term, epsilon, um, for simplicity, we'll let it be IID. We could, it's, 
Um, later, I will assume that different markets, uh, opportunities for ensuring these shocks versus those shocks. Um, but for, so, for simplicity, let's assume that epsilon is IND. I can generalize that. And let's also, for simplicity, assume that, that all these shocks are, uh, all these shocks are um, uh, independent. The key assumption that I cannot, uh, I can allow dependence between uh, a fine couple, which is, is, is a period, but I cannot, I cannot allow any, uh, uh, these omega and epsilon, they have to be independent. Okay, so that earnings, earnings before taxes for an individual I in period T consists of three components, the product of three components. Um, uh, there is a, a price of the skill you provide, P of SI, times, um, times the hours you work, age, IT, times the number of efficiency units uh, that you're endowed with, uh, which is just the exponent of uh, uh, alpha plus epsilon. So this, this basically, so, so this, I want this to capture somehow the, uh, uh, the, the, the idea that earnings are determined by, 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 by uh, diligence, hours worked, the investment uh, in, in skills uh, through the skill price, and, uh, and luck to this one. And you could also, if, if you will, it could also be that if, if, the, if the skill price changes, during your life, and you had not foreseen that, that would also obviously be, be part of luck. But uh, the, the idea is that it's important that uh, uh, earnings are determined by, by so investment, I luck, and diligence. Why do you choose the production function based on skill, not on the product of skill and efficiency? Isn't that what we do? So this is the aggregate. This is kind of the, the aggregate number of uh, efficiency hours supplied of skill type S. So, so if you and I had exactly the same skills, our hours work. What does it mean? I would show that you increase your skill, increase something else. I see. It doesn't, yes, exactly. Mm, I see. It doesn't decrease, it doesn't affect your skill, but it affects the number of hours, the, 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 the number of units of that skill you provide by working one extra hour. That's what we assume. So, so, if you, so, so you do your thing. If you get a good productivity shock, so you can, by working one hour, you can produce, you can produce five victor paper. So it's just, a, just one victor paper. Most people who call skills the matter, the problem with the problem is the application. We call skills quality education. Yeah, we could do that. I, I, I wanted to, to be, a, I think with the slightly more general. Yeah, the production but function depends on, on education on skill. That's what the, anyway. Fair enough. Okay, <coughs> government. Um, so imagine now that um, uh, the government uh, runs a um, tax system. Now there's two parameters. You know, this yi is your pre tax earnings, and why tilde is your after tax earnings. So your, pre, so your after tax earnings is a function, is there is a component lambda, which is, you can think of as one minus a flat tax rate, and then, uh, then earnings are taken to the power one minus tau. But tau somehow captures the degree of progressivity. So for example, if tau is equal to zero, then you can see then it's as if we have a flat tax system. If tau is uh, equal, if is positive, then then uh, if you have uh, larger earnings, you're going to get uh, it's, uh, a larger marginal tax rate. So the margin with positive tau, the marginal tax rate is always lar larger than the average tax rate. So that's what we call progressive taxes. In fact, if you let tau go all the way to one, you will um, um, uh, then you get the same earnings regardless of your pre-tax earnings. And if tau is negative, you would have regressive uh, taxes. So um, given, the, um, given the, um, the, the assumption, um, given that the government cannot, um, uh, uh, given the assumption that the government cannot borrow, um, public good provision 
is equal to uh, the aggregate taxes within the period, which is just the pre-tax earnings minus the after-tax earnings of each individual, or integrate over all. So in some sense, the government, government policy consists of three, three things. Um, the public good provision, the degree of progressivity tau, and this lambda uh, thing there. But No. Um, uh, in, in principle, uh, this tax rate could, could vary every period. We, uh, that's obviously going to be very hard. And uh, what we're going to do is to look at, um, is to look at uh, a compare uh, uh, steady states. Yes. Um, it's a bit early to talk about this because I haven't talked, but, uh, but uh, you're right. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I will explain Victor's question a bit later. Oh, but uh, you cannot talk about, let's talk about the equilibrium first and then we'll talk about policies. So, um, but, but first, let me just say, the government, government policy in, period, in a particular period consists of three parameters, uh, public good provision, progressivity, and lambda. Now, one dimension is pinned down because of, due to this balance, go, uh, uh, balance budget constraint, clearly the government only has two instruments. So we could pick two of them and say that that's what the government uses, and we pick G and tau. And forget about lambda. Just remember that lambda is determined residually from this uh, uh, market clearing condition, essentially. So I like to argue that, yes, this is a very simple uh, tax system. It's not a terrible description uh, of the US system. The, um, uh, imagine, it, imagine you took um, uh, CPS and you uh, look at you split the sample in say 20 bins, uh, and for each bin you, uh, and for each invader you, you use um, uh, taxim or something to, to predict what the post-tax earnings are, and then you calculate the average in each bin. You calculate the average earnings and the average post-tax earnings. Um, then you would get uh, the following blue dots. So, so, um, so given given this system, you take log on both sides. You see that it's uh, log of uh, after tax earnings is equal to constant plus one minus tau times log of pre tax earnings. So that's the red line. Um, and the blue dots are essentially the observations. No, this is a. Uh, uh, each uh, dot consists of the average for 5% of the population. So as you can see, it's not a very good approximation on the top or the bottom, but for the, for the vast majority of the middle, it's not so bad, but it's, it's look, look, I don't have to tell you that it's not necessary to say, oh, this is a really great description of the US system. All I want to say is not crazy. I thought the question was the US system is based on household structure. So uh, individuals pay different tax. Uh, That's what I'm asking you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Household? I admit that we have cheated here. And we have not looked at households. We just looked at individuals. And, and then, by the way, the model is a bachelor. It's kind of, it's, as you saw, it's a bachelor model. Yes? Yeah. Yes? Can we estimate the exact this tax function using micro data from IRS, not CPS? This is reported taxes, reported income, using households. It gives a good fit. It gives a different power, because the power is uh, quite low. So the households, yeah. it's, it's, uh, so it does a, it does a, just a very good thing, actually. Interesting. Thank you. No, but uh, who knows about the optimum? Um, I mean, we, we, we're talking about optimum with a big O. Obviously, Merle should uh, immediately enter. But that's not what we're going to do. Um, so I, I, let me give you a little warm-up before we, we define the equilibrium. Let's just give you a little warm-up uh, so we can somehow see um, where we're going. Imagine, imagine that. I take this, think of a static world now. I take 
uh, let's think of representative agents, where, where the, the has its utility function or aggregate consumption, aggregate hours, and as G is the public contribution. Subject to that, um, that the, uh, the, that the government, so the government uh, has this, uh, we, we have to use this tax system, say. So uh, 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 consumption is then just after tax uh, earnings, where we impose market clearing. And um, uh, in that, if we just, let's, if you just define a little g as uh, uh, the public uh, goods over output, um, and then we, we, if we, um, then we can write them that if you solve that little problem, we get the equilibrium allocations that look like this, um, which is and it's not surprising that that if you have a larger taxes, you get lower consumption and lower uh, hours worked. Now, let's put this. We would like to find the optimal. Tau, right? So let's just put these allocations back into here. Uh, that gives us the following. We can write the, uh, the welfare of the representative agent as a function of G and tau with the following function. It's straight. So we'll, if we just optimize over tau and G, we find that G is the um, Samuelson rule. Um, uh, depends on, on the weight on the, on the public good in the utility function. And tau is negative. Why is that? Well, uh, we know kind of what the first best. This, by the way, is the first best. We know what the first best looked like. It has, you, you want some taxes in order to cover the public goods, and then you want the, the intertemporal first of all condition to be undistorted at equilibrium. So, so uh, we have to deliver a system where the marginal tax rate is exactly zero at the equilibrium. Well, with this particular, given that uh, if you have progressive taxes, the marginal tax rate would be increasing. Uh, and positive and increasing with income. So that doesn't work. But it turns out that regressive taxes work. Then taxes are very, uh, 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 are very regressive if you have zero earnings. And they become increasingly less regressive as you increase earnings. And, and if we set tau exactly equal to minus chi, then, then you get it. So then we could, uh, then now we could just plug. The interesting thing here is that g somehow does not uh, uh, depend on tau. We can just plug in. Uh, uh, G star, we can plug it in here, and um, um, and, and we can write the utility function, uh, welfare function, uh, 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 like that. Okay. Yes. Am I missing something? One of the motivation for the for progressive taxation is insurance. Yes. So it's so it's it's a warm up. I'm going to get to no, exactly. No, 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 but even in the warm up. Yes. I have a representative agent, but this agent is with the first, right? Yes. So how come that I, that the optimal tax well, uh, well, you know, for, for the for the representative agent, there's no need zero to gain to redistribute because we all have the same, there's right? Sorry. Oh, yes, there's there's no no extra extra. oh, this yeah, it's the little representative agent. But obviously, I'm going to get to where you want to be. But um, let's talk about markets. Um, there are competitive goods and relevant markets. Um, there is, um, uh, like in Huggett's Huggett model, there is a, there is a, a, a bond, risk-less bond, that you can borrow and lend it. And that bond is going to be in zero net supply. And I have already apologized for that assumption. In addition, uh, there uh, is um, you, you want some, there's some insurance in addition. Uh, think of that as capturing, I don't know, what comes to the family, uh, friends, uh, uh, blah blah blah. So, so the point that we look, so, so there's a lot of empirical work suggesting that there is that that there is more insurance available to people than is just to self-insurance through a bond, and that's what we want to capture with this with uh, by allowing there to be perfect insurance against epsilon. Okay. So with that, and there is no insurance by assumption against the omega shock that that unit root alpha thing that move around. So that this captures somehow a, a couple of different uh, uh, market structures. So for example, if, if the variance of epsilon is zero, then it's literally uh, Mark Huggett's economy. If, um, if um, the variance of, of omega is uninsurable unit root shock, if that's zero, then we have literally a complete market economy. Um, uh, and if, um, if we in addition set um, theta equal to infinity and the variance of phi equal to zero, then we have the representative agent economy. Budget constraints. Here <coughs> is the timing within a period. You enter the period. The state variables 
is your bond, the, the, the amount of riskless bond you, you broke from the previous period. And you wake up and you see a new, new value for alpha. Now you walk over to the, to the insurance, you go, walk over to the insurance booth, you, you buy insurance against epsilon, which is gonna happen later in the period. You, the insurance agent asks you how much insurance you want, and you tell him, and uh, you sign some contract. Uh, without, loss of, uh, uh, without loss of generality, you spend all your wealth on buying insurance because the price of that insurance is fair. So Q of epsilon, that the price, fair price of the insurance, B of epsilon, that the amount, that's the amount of insurance you buy that realize, that gives you an insurance claim if state epsilon is realized. Then the state of the world is realized and uh, now you decide how much to work. Once you work, you consume. Here's the budget constraint after the shock is realized. B of epsilon, that's a payment on your insurance claims. They can be negative or positive, of course. Um, uh, age is how much you work, so this is your pre-tax earnings. Then we apply this government tax rule on that, and so this, the right-hand side is the cash on hand, and you can spend it for consumption or savings for next period, where Q is the bond price. And Delta just captures this uh, uh, perfect annuity markets that are floating around in the background. So that's the... So that, that's why it's a, it's a very useful simplification. Otherwise, we have to keep track. Otherwise, we have to introduce some islands. Yes. They are a bit ugly. But uh, it works with islands, too. It's just a bit more work. So recursive equilibrium, <coughs> Sta recursive stationary equilibrium. Uh, imagine you have a stationary, a constant policy G tau. Uh, and um, uh, um, and um, then a stationary equilibrium is the value of lambda star skill prices, uh, uh, asset prices, Q and Q, decision rules <laughs> that takes into consider where, where you have, uh, where z um, this is a decision rule, your, your skill decision, where uh, zero here is the amount of, of uh, this is your, um, zero here is the, the amount of wealth you're born with, your consumption, which is obviously a fun function of how much of, of, of the, the alpha, epsilon, phi, the skill and the amount of wealth you have, it's, and the same for labor supply. Uh, Cross equilibrium are these things so that households optimize, markets clear, uh, the government budget constraint is balanced, and turns out that the equilibrium is very simple. Namely, people always choose B equals zero. That means that in equilibrium, alpha is going to be completely uninsured, whereas epsilon will remain fully insured. Um, so. Uh, this, uh, so it must be irrespective of the Irrespective of tau. Now, if tau would vary, that's why Victor uh, uh, was making the claim about the station. If tau varies, this breaks down. If tau varies in a way that you expect. If it varies as a surprise, it's fine. But if you foresee it, then obviously, if you know that tax will be more progressive in the future, you have a higher earnings today, you're going to save for it. Um, so <coughs> in this model, Sorry? Not oh, you can borrow from somebody else. Aggregate wealth is zero. So, so it's perfectly fine to find somebody who would like to borrow. As a whole society, don't say yes. But if the point is, if if tau if long, if tau goes up to more, then imagine uh, uh, Costas has say very high wages, I have low wages. Um, uh, that means high, he has pays a very progress tax becoming more progressive tomorrow. So his see his wages are going down tomorrow relative to mine. That means that he wants to save and I want to borrow. So I will borrow from him then. Okay. Yes. Did you borrow then Yes. No. Well, in uh, in, in principle, uh, you can have you can tax savings, but it's just you can tax savings. It's just going to give you zero income because in the no, people it, 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 it turns out that the answer is no. Because b bond tax are just going to adjust. If you have a flat tax on savings. That's unfair, only for flat tax. Yeah. Correct. You don't have equally progressive You're right. You're right. But you're right. So uh, let me restate the question, uh, the answer. If 
taxes on, when I'm take, uh, senior Matthias, if taxes are flat on savings, uh, we're going to get exactly the same allocation. If we allow some kind of non linear no, tax. You don't. No, you don't. I'm not going to discuss it. It's just going to show up in the bond price. I'm going to get the same equilibrium. Yes? Do you remember right that there's no time trend in your wages? It's a random walk, I think, right? Or there is a time trend for the cohort. Um, cohort. Uh, but it's, uh, so I, I no, 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 you're right. It's, there's no time trend in the cohort. Uh, because I have assumed the, uh, yes, because I, ours are going to be flat. So if I had a life cycle profile, I, I'm, I'm young, I know my wages go up, you're old, you know they're falling. Uh, would that then change the result? Because I know that my tax will go up given the progressivity. Uh, that's right. But uh, uh, there is no time trend by assumption <coughs> in the model. <coughs> Otherwise. But you can have it with your preferences and so on. You can have, you can have, you can have the uh, you know, individual endowments go, going up at the constant rate in every period. So there is a way to do it. Uh, uh, if you let, if you let um, the, uh, young and old co uh, 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 co-show each other, uh, it's a bit complicated just. It's not hard to do it. It's not hard to uh, extend the model in that direction. OK, um, let me speed up a bit. So let's, let's think of, given this allocation, let's now talk about some of the, so I showed you one piece of meat. Now I'm going to get into the filet menu, I think. So let's think about the skill choice. Remember, um, uh, skill, the utility function, you did not find it for it, fortunately, is that uh, uh, there's a skill, this utility skill investment is quadratic. That means, of course, that the optimal skill choice divided by ma this uh, kappa is, is uh, 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 constant times the margin utility of having a uh, visual unit of skills. Right? Given the utility function that uh, boils down and the progressivity of the, tax of the tax system, that boils down to be equal to 1 minus tau times the, the marginal change in the log skill price. Okay, so if I know, once I know this skill price function, I can figure out how much you would like to, um, uh, to uh, uh, invest. But the important thing is linear in that. So as you can see, S is going to be this chunk here times kappa. So let's remember, I said I wanted the return to skill to be roughly linear. In fact, Exactly linear. Let's guess that log of ps has this particular form, pi zero plus pi one times s, where I don't know yet what pi, pi, pi zero and pi one is. In that case, as you can see from here, then then um, uh, then in that case, derivative of, of log of ps with respect to s just becomes a constant pi one. That means that s is going to inherit the distribution of kappa. S is going to be constant times kappa. Remember, I said that kappa was estimates a distributed um, exponential. Turns out that with the CES production function, if the skill distribution is exponential, then um, then then this is going to be then the log, skill, log of the skill pi is going to be linear in equilibrium. And pi one is, is the return to skill as this particular form. It has um, it is eta divided by uh, uh, theta times 1 minus tau. So if, think of two special cases. Let's first think of the case when theta is infinity, goes to infinity. So it means that you get, you get increasingly uh, uh, your um, uh, this, uh, skill types are perfect substitutes. Obviously, if they are perfect substitutes, there's no need to take education. Sure enough, um, uh, this pi 1 goes to 0. Imagine now that tau increases. It's interesting. You see that tau increases. That that makes this thing larger. Why is that? Well, the point is that when you have no progressive taxes, um, uh, people want to. If you if you hold prices fixed, then people are going to take less education. People take less education, then the return to skill have to go up in equilibrium. Some of that. Um, so this captures that. But as you can see, the return to skill goes up less fast than the, than the skill goes down. So the skill choices fall faster. Nevertheless, if we calculate the cross-sectional variance of uh, the, uh, the, the skill prices, that turns out to be invariant to the, to the, to the 
uh, progressive taxes. So there are two opposing effects. On the one hand, uh, when you have more progressive taxes, people take less education. So that should tend to compress the skill distribution. On the other hand, when uh, more progressive taxes, people, uh, their return to skill goes up. So that you should tend to increase it. So those two forces exactly offset. If we had, in, if we had allowed for some kind of, in this production function, there's no inherently good about uh, having a higher S. Suppose we introduced an inherent skill bias in production. Then, then uh, this thing would be slightly more complicated. There will be another term here which captures this exogenous, uh, uh, exogenous uh, thing. So that, so that the general equilibrium effects would, equilibrium forces would affect the return to skill less. And uh, yes. Now, finally, note that um, given that, uh, you know, as you know, the exponential is so, so, so the distribution of wages here, everything that has to do with the alpha and epsilon and phi is log normal. Everything that has to do with skill is exponential. We know that in the tail, the exponential, the, the Plato distribution is much heavier. That means that if you go out, in the, this green, the, here we've taken, gone to, this is multiples of the average wage, so uh, seven, eight, nine, and so on. If you go out in the tail, you see that, that if you have a log normal wage distribution, there will be nothing in the tail. But in our model, um, the tails are very heavy uh, because the upper tail is, is uh, exponential. Now let's talk about allocations. Here's the, um, <coughs> the equilibrium allocation for consumption can be characterized as follows. There is a, there is a, a, a a term which is exactly the same as we, we solved for in the representative agent. There is a term that depends on the variance of um, in shoulder variation, the, the, the variance of epsilon. And then there are three terms um, that are all pre-multiplied by, by one minus tau. The log of the skill price, uh, the, the preference section 85, and the earned shoulder shock. So as you can see, um, progress, progressive taxation delivers exactly what we like in terms of reducing the, disper uh, reducing the dispersion that's due to alpha. Because it just compresses uh, 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 consumption. Uh, we're able to, we don't like this dispersion. The planner, at least, from the from initial example point of view, the planner don't like that. However, it also does the same with the, distribu the dispersion that's due to preference section 80. And, uh, uh, well, exposed, it's good that it compresses the skill price, but unfortunately, uh, it's also going to deter it, the, the incentives to invest. Um, if we look at labor supply, there are some similar terms. The representative agent term, the, the, the equivalent term to what to this thing that comes from the uh, insurable variance, minus the preference at 80, plus um, uh, something like official elasticity times the insurable shock. Note that this is not official elasticity. It's not the sigma in the utility function, it's sigma hat. See, it's in this model, the, the fish elasticity gets modified by taxes. So one over sigma hat is like one minus tau over sigma plus tau. So it's a number that's always smaller than the so-called preference-based fish elasticity. So there you can see how progressive taxes is bad in terms of the insurable stuff. On the one hand, so you need um, uh, social insurance to insure the, the, the market provides already insurance against epsilon, but people respond less strongly than the planner would like uh, to those shocks. Yes? 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 Speak faster. I don't tell all the time. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to understand where you need the whole machinery of I, I'm not, stuff and I'm not going to do more this. Right. This is Ramsey. I've chosen a particular class of policies. Is that, is that uh, uh, so I'm, I'm just looking within the class of the Lambda Tau policies. I'm going to tell you, look at how the planner feels about different tops. That's the exercise. Um, OK, so. <laughs> What we like, what we would need, I think, 
to get a close to the Melissa location uh, in, in, in this um, uh, inversion of this model is, is to have, uh, to have a, a lump sum transfer, which we didn't allow. Now, I have to say, though, that uh, when you ask, when you talk about Melissa taxation, people do it. So, so there are a number of things we have in this model that, that the Melissa guys are nowhere near being able to analyze. What did the fact, uh, having insurable risk that the planner cannot see? So the people can do some private insurance, but the planner cannot see how the payoffs of that of those assets to bring that. Human capital, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just get to the to the bottom line. We assume a particular uh, welfare function. Uh, they start with an equally weighted planner. And let me this is the exact expression of the social welfare function. No reduced form, no approximation, this is it. You might think it looks ugly, that's not true. The, this term here is exactly what we had in the representative agent uh, uh, economy that I showed you earlier. In fact, we know so the G only enters here. So it, we, can, we can do the same trick and rewrite the social representative uh, uh, agent welfare, uh, uh, solve for the G and put it in, then we we'll get, we'll just get this representative agent term here plus these other terms. Now all these terms are very easy to interpret. These things here, uh, everything have to do with uh, uh, skill investment. So why is progressive taxes bad? Well, because they, they reduce the average productivity in the economy. That, that, that's exactly what this term here captures. This is uh, a term that's falling in town. It's multiplied by one per sky because the planner gets utility from your consumption, but this additional utility for being able to provide more public goods. Um, uh, However, but there are two terms that are good here. On the one hand, um, they, you reduce the average education cost. The, the planner is happy about that because the education cost will be there. It's a, it's, it's a waste. Um, uh, it's also, we're also able to reduce the consumption dispersion cost, cost skills. That's exactly what this term is about. Uh, these are the terms here. Oops. These are the terms here. Uh, uh, um, this is the consumption dispersion due to preferences. This is this term here, which is approximately equal to 1 minus tau squared times V alpha over 2. It's the, it's the stuff that comes from the cons consumption dispersion due to the uninsured shocks. This term here, again, is um, uh, what um, is due to the insurable shocks. Note that uh, uh, this, this is a positive number. Obviously, the planner can never be unhappy about having more insurable risk. That's a good thing from the point of view of the planning because it allows you to reallocate labor uh, uh, to the more uh, efficient uses. I'm a bit out of time. Yeah, no, so I'm to say it for you. Time. So uh, I'm going to uh, basically, I would have liked to show you a bunch of things, but that's not going to happen. But I uh, just want to say what we, what we can do then is to uh, use, use some simple moments. I promised you that the model is consistent with the core movements of consumption hours and wages. So we could just use those moments to pin down the, parameter, to pin down the parameters and, and get uh, uh, some estimate of, of the um, uh, social welfare function. And then in this case, the optimal progressivity turns out to be uh, uh, about, uh, point, about 9%. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.